The 20th century roared in, revolutionizing technology and work. The advancements brought opportunities for organized labor and growth. Optimism abounded at home. But on the world front, conflict loomed. Joining a world at war, Canada and then the United States scurried to prepare our armed forces. The AFL answered the call. Samuel Gompers worked with President Wilson to step up wartime production, forming a landmark collaboration between government and labor. In 1918, the First World War came to an end. Our economy took flight. Playing the stocks became a dangerous public obsession. The stock game ended with a crash on October 29, 1929. Soon the Great Depression spanned the globe. Union membership declined as rapidly as the stock market. This great nation will endure as it has endured, will revive and will prosper. Roosevelt launched the New Deal, and organized labor signed on to Roosevelt's Works Progress Administration to build public works projects and operate utilities across the United States. WPA employees earned the prevailing local wage based on the 1931 Davis-Bacon Law. As citizens worked toward economic recovery, the House of Labor became divided in 1935 with the creation of the Congress of Industrial Organizations, the CIO, which gave voice to mass production workers who felt left behind by the AFL. Just before 8 a.m. on December 7, 1941, the Japanese launched a sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. Within a few hours, more than half of the battleship fleet was sinking. U.S. tradesmen signed up for the Seabees, America's construction battalion, earning their motto, we build, we fight. In addition to their war efforts to construct more than 115 square miles of airports, Canadian workers revived their nation's shipbuilding industry, going on to earn high praise for keeping shipping lanes open in the Atlantic. 